Hey, welcome to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. Uh, the question was asked, why do contactors fail? We got a common contactor here that goes into a residential HVAC system. And uh, a lot of you technicians will know that you, you know, you change out these quite frequently. Uh, we got a world of uh, do-it-yourselfers out there, and you'll see a lot of blogs and posts online of, of homeowners that try to diagnose and figure out what's going on with their contactors. There's a couple things that cause them to fail. Uh, let's open this one up. This one has a, a top uh, or protective uh, plate over the top of it, so you can't see the act where the actual contacts uh, make contact. So we unscrew these, and we'll take that top off, and then we'll be able to look down in there and kind of see it. So once we get that off, all right. So there's the the inside of our contacts. That's the little contactor right there that makes makes noise and all the chatter when we hear it. So what are some of the things that uh, make the contactor fail? Well, a lot of times uh, uh, people think that the contactor has failed when it's, it's really a lack of signal, shall we say. So uh, we come out here and we test on the sides there and we'll see I don't have 24 volts there to make that coil engage and come in. Now if it was hooked to a, a system and I had it hooked to a circuit board or control board, I could send voltage there. That would create a magnetic field and then draw that contactor in and then electricity could pass through. Some of the things that are common issues is on the inside, these contacts, it can become black or pitted uh, from arcing. So one of the things is a low voltage or lack of voltage to the contactor that cause it to chatter. Um, so it'll, you know, it'll chatter like that and go happen like that frequently. And every time it does that, there's a little arcing that happens. So when that arcing happens, if you look down inside, what'll happen is those, those plates, those contact plates, either they won't make connection for the electricity to pass through, or they'll be welded shut and the system just runs, you can't shut it off. So that's one of the issues that happens and probably one of the most common ones. Um, the other thing is over voltage, right? We could have excessive voltage from heat or other things like that that just burn everything up and seize the darn thing shut. And it just doesn't work like that because we've got way too much voltage there. So those are two of the most common things with contactors but come in really, really close because I got a secret. There's one other thing out there that just happens and it blows everybody away when they hear it. Inside of here, we can get the most technical nuance that man has ever seen, the almighty ant. So ants get trapped in here. They're attracted to the electricity. They crawl in there and then those ants build up and then the ants get in between the contacts and the contacts cannot make contact. Um, that's why it's a good thing to kind of have this little uh, protective device on there to kind of keep ants from getting inside of your contactor. Well, in your career, you're going to change out a lot of these. You're going to look at them. Make sure you remember to check and make sure that you're getting a signal uh, from your control board inside and that that's not the problem. And then you're going to look at all of those other things to kind of see why your contactor failed. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Toolbox Tuesday. We'll see you next time.